Rooted, week nine, day five, time to tell. Earlier this week, we talked about salt and light, and we will continue to look at that today with this verse in mind. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5.16 If we are going to be salt and light, we are to do something. It is not enough to have good intentions or to talk about it, or even just to pray about it. Jesus wants us to move. What is it he wants us to do? We need to be intentional and sometimes even strategic. This doesn't mean we should manipulate relationships or actions with evangelism as our only intent. That's not it at all. But we may need to be a little more purposeful in sharing our stories with those with whom we come in contact. God is working all around us, and if we are paying attention, we can join him in his work. The Holy Spirit can move us into places or situations to plant spiritual seeds and walk with people on their spiritual journeys. Time and again, Jesus modeled this for us in the New Testament. Jesus has called us to show both grace and truth to people. We must remember that having an impact in someone's life is holistic. It requires seeing and interacting with people in their entirety and knowing they move forward spiritually at their own paces and in their own ways. Jesus had an uncanny ability to meet people at their point of need. Sometimes it was obvious, like when a blind man needed sight or a dead little girl needed to be raised to life. But other times the need was subtler. Take the need Zacchaeus, the much maligned tax collector, had in Luke 19. Though wealthy Zacchaeus was shunned by the religious establishment and many of his fellow Jews, he was isolated and shamed. Jesus recognized this about Zacchaeus and met him right where he was. One day Jesus called Zacchaeus out of the crowd and honored him by having dinner at his house. He knew that it was exactly what Zacchaeus needed and how it would draw him closer to God. On another occasion, a leper came to Jesus and asked to be healed, Matthew 8. Jesus could easily have healed him with just a word, but he chose to heal the man with a touch. The touch was significant because leprosy was considered highly contagious and made someone unclean. Jesus' touch may have been the first one this man had felt in months or years. It was exactly what he needed. Jesus also knew how to build good friendships. He realized people weren't targets to be converted, but potential friends with whom he could interact, work alongside, and enjoy. Jesus built significant friendships with his disciples, with many of the women who were also his disciples, scandalous for a rabbi, with Lazarus and his two sisters, and many others. Jesus gave his friendships time and emotional energy. Finally, Jesus knew how to move people toward God, whether it was gently nudging them with a question or two, or being more direct with, com with commands and challenges. <clears throat> Jesus was a master at helping people take their next step with God. Consider how Jesus helped the woman at the well grasp who he was, John 4, and how he challenged Nicodemus, a Pharisee, with a question, John 3, or how he confronted Peter after Peter had denied him, John 21. Each of these approaches hit their mark and helped the person progress toward a vibrant relationship with God. Whether Jesus was meeting needs, making friends, or moving people toward God, in all cases he had real spiritual impact, and there is no reason we can't do the same. Where is God giving you these opportunities? Ask God to show you those around you who do not know him and ask for the opportunity to share your faith. We should always be looking for places around us where we can meet people at their points of need, whether it is helping them deal with sickness, helping them deal, helping excuse me, helping them get their children home from school or taking a little time to listen to someone explain a problem 
We make a strong statement about how much we care. There is nothing that opens people up to a relationship like having a felt need met by someone who cares about them. Here's the other thing about meeting a need. There are plenty. All we have to do is look around. The reason we often miss these opportunities is because we are either too busy or too focused on our own agenda. If you are having trouble identifying needs around you, which you can help consider taking a day or a part of a day, and ask God every 15 to 30 minutes to show you a need you can meet, you will be surprised by how many opportunities God brings your way. In some cases, meeting the need of a person will naturally lead to creating or a deepening or deepening a friendship. You may get to finally meet the neighbors you never got around to introduce yourself to. You may connect with a coworker on a deeper level than the water cooler tank. There may be someone God wants in your life as much for his or her spiritual journey as for yours. Remember, we aren't on a quest to make friends to save people. Open your heart and your life to someone, and then let God do the heavy lifting. We are called to be Jesus' ambassadors in a broken world. And the best way for us to fulfill that calling is to reach out and care for those around us. Moving someone toward Jesus doesn't always mean you have to share the four chapters in God's story or tell your whole story chronologically. But at some point, it is important that people see you as more than a really considerate person or a really good friend. The purpose of sharing our light is so your friend will glorify your Father in heaven. The greatest gift you can ever give someone who doesn't yet know Jesus is an introduction to him. You don't want to leave someone guessing as to who Jesus is or how he or she can connect with him. Don't worry about finding the perfect time to tell someone about Jesus. You don't have to force Jesus into the conversation. Just be as open and ready to have a conversation when God provides the right opportunity. Share with others why your life looks different or why you have hope. As Christ followers, it's impossible for us to separate doing good and the hope we have from our relationship with Jesus. So conversations about him and how he changed our lives will oftentimes come naturally. As we tell our story to others, it's important to remember it's not about us. It's not about how we have changed, but how God, through the saving grace of his Son, changed us. When we tell our story, we tell the story of God. Peter gives us advice when it comes to sharing our story. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. 1 Peter 3, 15 and 16.